Hello and welcome along to live match reaction here on the Rangers Rabble as Rangers fall to defeat for what feels like the first time in in years. 1-0 away to Tranmere. Um, we are live on YouTube and YouTube only, which will be the we'll, going forward with live match reactions will only be on YouTube. We're about eight away, I think, from 2K subscribers. So if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, just do it. Just get us to 2K and then you don't need to watch any other videos ever again. And there you go. I'm joined by Brian, Ross and Scott. Scott, who just waved at somebody? I don't know. Who was that? Was My son was leaving. Oh, right, there you go. Well done. Right. Um, we, there's a lot to discuss about the game that's not actually about the game. And I think you all know what it is. I think there's going to be a few folk in the comments about unhappy Ross and <laughs> you were messaging me through the first 10 15 minutes of that game about RTV yet yeah, again a shambles. ITV, invisible television, is it? <laughs> I, I, I just wouldn't work for me, but then eventually it kicked in. Um, and we had no commentary, so we had no Tom commentator for the first half, which was good for the years. And then <laughs> the second half, Tom came back, so but it, it wasn't very good to be honest. I like Tom. I don't know why Tom gets... No, I yeah. like Tom. I'm just saying the service wasn't very good. That's the first time I've ever had problems with it, to be honest. It was like this last season, Scott, quite a lot with RTV. And I'm, look, it's only a pre-season game, and I wasn't sure if it was maybe more to do with Tranmere um, or yeah. it was the actual Rangers stream. But the game was available on other sites that maybe aren't so legal. So if the game's playing fine on there, why is it not playing fine on RTV? I'm not got a clue, man. I'm not out. Technically, the whole that side of the world, I'm not great on, but I couldn't get on. I couldn't get on the TV. It wasn't really working, so I tried it on my phone and it worked fine. So mm. I don't know the issues. I done it through my phone on the app and it worked, but when I tried to do it on the TV, it was sticking. It was going away. I could hear. The, I could hear the game. I couldn't see the game, so I just watched it on my phone. It's frustrating, Brian, because you've been charged for it, you know. Yeah. Um, and we've had problems with our TV before, so. Let's just hope that that's the end of it and there's nothing going into the season. Yeah, I mean, you kind of thought after last season and they put all the money into all the media stuff, you thought that oh, everything's going forward now. But uh, first 10 minutes, I just, I was just watching the telly, the, the game, and there was no commentary. There was just nothing. It was just, I was like, what's, is there anything happening here? And then all of a sudden, Tom kicked in after about 10 minutes. I was like, oh. But it just kept cutting out, as folk were saying. The second half for me was really bad. It just mm -hmm. never just didn't stay on for any length of time at all. Which is good for us doing match reaction, I suppose. But we'll <laughs> <laughs> Between us, we may have got to see the full game, I don't know. Um, starting lineups in pre-season friendlies are never... It's, it's, it's never... Oh, I'm surprised at that, I'm surprised at that, because it's pre-season, you want to give everybody a game. Ross, but were you slightly surprised? I suppose I'm contradicting myself, but Glenn Middleton at left-back? Mm-hmm. I've seen him. I've seen him play there before for the for the reserves. Um, I think it was just about getting minutes in people's legs again, Martin. To be honest with you, uh, a particular worry for me is Roof playing wide of the three again. Because for me, when the season starts, Roof will. I would imagine Roof would be playing through the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Ruff's going to be late back to pre season. So I would imagine I would like to see Ruff playing through the middle and try to get a few goals rather than Danny's running on this, on the, in the kind of inside forward positions. I know, look, I've seen a few folk online, Scott, saying look, I'd rather have seen young James Maxwell get a shot at left back, particularly with the players that were on the pitch, because it was quite a strong team they put out. Yeah, I agree with that. Actually, I know Glenn is pretty big because he's left sided. He's a left sided player, so it keeps the shape of the team better than probably putting somebody else's right foot out there. But I put the boy Maxwell because in these games, results don't matter. I know to some fans it does, but it doesn't matter. I just try to get it. What I said, minutes and the legs, get them back to you. Bit of sharpness and make, if you make mistakes, you make mistakes. It's a few friendly games, you want to make mistakes. So you rather give the young guys a chance as well as well with the experienced guys. We have a few players missing, but. Type, these are the type of games I don't know for us about as well. Unless we get a doing, I'm not happy. But one no, with enough chance to win the game, to be honest with you, just going to take a chance. He's, in, he's scored a strike at Maguire, couldn't save. So, no, I like to give the young boys a chance because Kelly does well, Mayo does well. And I think some of the young guys need a chance because some of the players we've got are squad players 
Maybe they're not fan of being end up. I think someone might leave. So give the young boys a chance. If they're good enough, then give them a chance. Oh, listen, hundred percent. Give the young boys a chance. Um, obviously, the first game against Partick Thistle, I think he played maybe too many young boys in the first half. Um, but Brian, your thoughts on the game overall? Then, like Scott says, it's not necessarily the result that matters, but does performance matter in preseason? I'm loath to say yes, but it is all about minutes at the end of the day. Um, you you would like them to see them win every game, obviously, but. It's, as Scott was saying, it's more important for the minutes and the legs to get them up to fitness and getting ready for the Champions League qualifiers, which are, you know, not going to be that far away in the start of the seasons at the end of the month. So, no, I, I, I was in the camp of, all oh, I want them to win all the pre-seasons, but you want them just to get ready for the games that matter, to be quite honest. Does the result of the day, Ross, we'll come, we'll come to individual players, there's a few I want to speak about, we'll come to some missed chances, but does the result and performance today at all worry you? No. No, I think um, it's about giving people... What worries me is, I noticed uh, Derek for the podcast tweeting, some people have played theirself, are playing theirself at the moment for me, out of contention for the season. We're giving players chances, we're giving people that have, as I said the other day on the pod, went away out on loan and performed well for other clubs. Obviously, you know, I watched a lot of Glenn Middleton last year when he was at St. Johnson, and uh, it's a different player to the boy that plays for Rangers. I, I firmly believe that, that, that when he played with them, he was driving, looked full of confidence, was he? Looks like a bag of nerves, do you know what I mean? But he's getting his chance, that's two games he's had his chance, and then you've obviously, I, I'm a big fan of Jordan Jones, I don't make any admissions that I'm no, but he again, doesn't he, doesn't he, you're expecting players like that mm -hmm. to be coming in and, and making stuff happen and really saying to Gerard, look, I know Ryan Kent's been late back for summer, I know Morelos is not even big getting. he's he scored the other night, but he's he's not been great up through the middle, has he? Again, and so the, it's people that I, I, you would hope that would be coming back, chomping at the bit and want to score goals and take people on and make stuff happen. To be fair, I thought Big Bassy, I thought Big Bassy was really good today. I put in yeah. a couple like great balls in the second half, and we've got knocked in the box. Mm -hmm. So that, that, it's no worrying as such, but what's worrying for me is the people who are getting a chance but maybe not taking it. To go along with that, Scott, look, it's, it's difficult because we're only a game and a half in and Rangers fans aren't known for overreacting, I think, are we? Or are we known for overreacting? Um, do you think there is players... Do you think there is players maybe playing themselves out of contention for the season? Or do you think we need to give them another few games to try and bed in? Because you can't say on one hand, look, Ken, Morelos, when Morelos comes back, whoever, Goldson, they're allowed to make mistakes because they'll get, they'll, they'll get rid of them, they'll bed themselves in. And on the other hand, say, well, look, Barker didn't impress, uh, Middleton didn't impress, they're gone. I think Gerard knows he's 11 players, he knows he can trust, maybe 13, 14 players, he knows he can trust. The, other, the young guys, he's willing to give them a chance because he knows they're young and they will make mistakes, they will come. But like Ross says, Jordan Jones come onto the park, he's a winger, he's a forward. You don't really see him driving anybody, keep cutting back inside and just passing the ball. It's like driving mm -hmm. somebody, like Bassey comes on. He wants to drive it, folks. Sometimes his ball's not great. Other times his ball's here to be for a strike to put into the net. Nobody was there. Big acting. To be honest with you, he didn't look interested at times. Whereas we've seen the first half, Jermaine Defoe missed a couple of chances that actually annoyed him. And that's the mm -hmm. difference. I mean, Jermaine Defoe's about 38, I don't know, 39. He's missing a chance and it annoys him. Big kid and does a shot over the bar and he just puts his head and goes, good enough. I mean, it's just, I know it's different mentality, but like Glenn Middleton, I mean, I've seen him with St. Johnston, and it was said he's right, he was beating players, he was scoring a few different types of goals. He looked a really good player coming to Rangers, he does look nervous. It's like he's afraid to make a mistake in case he's left out, and I don't know if that's coming for the manager, coming for the management team, or just to put himself kind of under the pressure playing the Rangers. So I think there's a few players in the squad mm -hmm. there this season coming if they can replace him. It all depends who, who takes him off his. See, just going on for that, Scott. Sorry, Martin, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get at. See, see the new Middleton's getting game time, Jones is getting game time. See, as our regular starters come back for international duty, they're going to need games. You've only got four or five preseason games. That's the point I'm getting. They, mm -hmm. need, they, need to hit the, they need the first two games to show and come out and 
and really stake their claim because see for the next three games you're going to start getting your first team players back in and they guys are very quickly going to that's their chance being and gone do you know what I'm talking about that's the way I was looking at it now Kent's back you're going to imagine Aribo's going to have to start getting kind of 60 minutes in his legs as is Davis as is Goldson so these guys have went for getting two half games to them maybe get on the last 15 as pre-season goes on do you know what I mean so they've had the chance early doors to go and really take a game for the scruff of the neck and they've not really done it for me. I know, but listen, get your comments in. Um, if anybody's watching and they think, you lot are talking a lot of shit, um, get DM on Twitter at Rangers Rabble and we'll try and get you on. It's going to be a short show today, guys. Look, there's no a great deal to talk about. It's more about individual players. But if you fancy coming on to make a point, head over to Twitter at Rangers Rabble, send me a DM and I'll do my best to get you on. Um, Brian, we've got a wee comment here for Stuart Keane. Mayo and Middleton are getting moved about from their normal positions. Expect them to be loaned out. Um, kind of Ross and Scott have kind of both touched on Middleton. Um, totally yeah. different player than St Johnston. Maybe the just is just too big. Do you expect them to be in this range of team going forward? Not particularly, I don't think, on the form that he's shown. As, as Ross was saying, he was just a completely different player from St Johnston last season. I'm sure he scored a free kick in the, was it the semi or the final? Mm -hmm. he just, he just, I think... He just had the, the the sort of what's the word I'm looking for? He just seemed like a, he, he felt comfortable at St Johnson. He was he was like the big player there. He came on loan from Rangers, and maybe it is too big for him. I don't know, but as you say, he just looks a bag of nerves. And yeah, I can't really see how he's going to get a way back in. That is, with all these guys coming back from either injuries or internationals or just needing game time. Don't see it. I know, it's a shame. It's a shame because I, I really I feel that Glenn Middleton has got all the potential in the world. I really do. Um, Ross, very, you've seen obviously now. Sorry, say that again, Ross. Then he's still very young. Another um, season, I think Johnson maybe send him back there and where he's allowed to flourish and allowed to play his game. And then mm. he's still, because he's been about the Rangers first team, obviously coming up through the league since he was about 17 or 18, I think he's a lot older than he is. He's only maybe 22 or something. Do you know mm. what I mean? As, see now, right, just this isn't really about Rangers, this is just about football in general. See the way football is going. Is 22 young now? No. In football? And it depends on the club, man. Think yeah. it depends on the club? If you're, in a, if you're playing for a Rangers where you're expected to win every week and there's a high expectation and you don't get a chance to fail, you kind of go and express yourself because mm -hmm. you're feared to make a mistake and the fans got on your back and then... So I think if you're at a Hamilton Ackies, for example, who are famous for bringing through great young players, they've got a system where they can go and play football and express themselves and do what they want. And there's no, if they draw, or get, if they get beat to nothing, then it's just a, another defeat. Do you know what I mean? See, I think there's a, I think there's a difference between um, a club who demands success like us. If if Gerard was to play a middle one in that in a league game and we get beat, Gerard's going to take the flag and the fans are going to be on here complaining about the performances of the players. I think it. I don't, I don't think uh, Rangers, unless you're top tier youth, I don't think Rangers or Celtic for that matter really is the the best place to try and to try and break into a first team and, and get a lot of minutes. So, so for you then, Scott, if you're 22 and you haven't kind of nailed down. I mean, let's be honest, a position, never mind a place, then yeah, you've still got a chance at Rangers. I mean, you, at Rangers is the same as everybody else. You see down in England at Man City, many players they've lost. Other, other clubs have won the Bundesliga, playing really well, and getting, coming back to England, getting sold, like Jaden Sancho, do you know what I mean? So, I think it's, if you come through Rangers, Barry Ferguson done it, Hutton done it, but there's not a lot of others we can, you can know off the top of your tongue and say they've come through and done it. There's players coming through and they look good, but then they kind of disappear. Because, like mm -hmm. Ross said, the, the fans are wanting to win something, so we, you go to the tried and thrifty guys, you go to the guys that might cost 10 million, 5 million, you say, going to the guy that came 4 miles down the road, so unless it's an exception, I'm being exceptional at that age. Coming through when you're young, you don't have any fright because you're willing to express yourself, you're willing to play because you play without any fear. What do you get? You start playing with fear, and that's probably Glenn's problem. He's getting older, he's been about mm -hmm. Rangers a wee bit. And he started to be scared to make mistakes because he knows making mistakes in the past has caused him games. Because you've seen him yeah. in some of the Europa League games, he's putting balls in and big laugh he was saying them and stuff like that when he first came. And he thought, this boy's a player. And he is. But the last couple of games he's played, he has been like a rabbit in headlights because it's like, if I'm making a mistake here, 
I might be loaned out, I might be sold. And to be honest with you, I think he wants to play at Rangers, but it's just taking a chance when it comes to him. And for some reason, he's not grabbing it with both hands. But he's doing that, St Johnson. He's taking chances and it's working because he's not got the pressure. Oh, if I make a mistake, then oh, I might not play next week or whatever, you know. Can I just say, <laughs> Jamie Galloway comment of the day. Don't worry, lads. It's all a part of the strategy to beat Real Madrid. <laughs> make Real complacent, thinking we're pish. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Well, I, mean, I mean, obviously, look, the first half. I mean, we're, we're talking here as if you know, trying me were all over us, and we never got a touch of the ball. First half, I thought up until the final third, we were excellent. Yeah. And there was maybe three, four occasions, Brian, where the goal was getting, and I'm still confused as to how the phone never got at least a brace. Oh, well, the, the, the stramash that we were speaking about, I mean, there was three attempts, at least maybe four, that you thought, well, he's going to get it in this time, and it still didn't go in. But, yeah, it was just, it was just so fractured in the first half, at the, in the last third. There wasn't the flow. There wasn't the sort of the calmness when it was needed a good ball or a bit of composure in the last bit. Yeah, I mean, up till Tramier scored, it was, you know, we were all over them. And I think that was Tramier's first shot and goal when they scored. So it wasn't as though we were getting, like, hammered and, you know, mm -hmm. passed around and everything. We were doing all right. And then it just seemed to be when the goal went in, it was like, oh, it's a bit of a shock to the system. And they just, they tried and tried and tried. And I think they could have went an hour 90 minutes and not scored. Oh, well, that's probably true. But, Ross, the kind of first half, if you, if you look at the overall play, I thought we actually played quite well. Dominated it. We absolutely dominated the game. I'm not saying I'm not saying that it was a poor performance by us. I'm just saying the people that we are talking about, your your Ittons, your Joneses, your uh, Middletons, these are all forward thinking players and, and it's what Brian's just said there. The, the the top end of the park is where we fell fell down the day. So they're the boys that are out there to try and impress and stake places for teams, and they're the boys that don't look that don't look as I'm not saying they don't look as fit because obviously they're in the middle of preseason, but they don't look as sharp, they don't look as hungry. Um, I think you've seen the difference when Bassey came on, as we spoke before, who came right up the park. Mm -hmm. Kent wants to get on the ball, isn't he? Fear to drift his position to go and pick it up and take a guy on. So that's the kind of level that the, the, the aforementioned players need to start start getting to, do you know what I mean? Well, they've still got a chance before very quickly again. It's Glenn Middleton's gone on loan. Uh, that obviously shouts last year Abassi to go on loan because he wasn't getting minutes. And so these boys are getting, that's not, this is what I'm saying, they're getting their chance, but they don't look, to me, they don't look as if they're, they're taking it, which is unfortunate, even though the team's playing well. That it's at the it's at the top end of the park that makes a difference in it. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see the starting lineups. Not so much against Arsenal, but but Real Madrid to see what kind of team he plays in that. But Scott, the Tranmere goal. Um, a few times the day, I think we kind of seen last ditch defending, failing to get rid of the ball. But it was Kieran Morris. It was a really good strike, and McGregor had no chance, did he? No, he never, but he, sh he, sh he shouldn't have got the chance because the ball should have been closed. He should be closed down quicker, but I think if I remember rightly, it was a TV going on and off. It was a long ball and we didn't clear it and then had a chance to clear it. Never cleared it and then it felt the lad. I think it was Middleton and Simpson that tried to shot him down. No quick enough. He took his straight to strike. McGregor wasn't getting it because one of the ones that just served it in the corner. So it was a decent strike, but they didn't have many chances apart from that. A couple of long balls tasted us, but for some reason, even last season, a couple of long balls tasted us at times, but Talking about young guys, I'm, I'm most, Jack Simpson I watched last season, I came and I've seen him the last couple of games and I'm still not impressed with it. I hope he proves me wrong, but I'm still not impressed with him. I think he's got a mistake in him. And I'd rather have, if anything, I'd rather have the goals and have big catty chair, I'm afraid. What's your thoughts on that, Brian? I mean, I, I don't like to try and put guys down, especially in pre-season. If, yeah. if it was halfway through the league season and he wasn't performing well, but... What's your kind of thoughts on the defence overall? Yeah, it's just, mm, as you say, Goldson's the, what would I say, the glue that holds everything together, basically. Um, he's he's the organiser, he's the, the leader in the back, the back four, you know, he keeps it, he keeps everybody on in positions and yeah, I think if something happened to Goldson or he was sold, then we're in a, a bit of bother. But as you say, I hope Cartage comes back fitter and 
bigger than what he was, obviously. But um, <laughs> he'll, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not as Scott was saying. I'm still not sure about Simpson. He's a wee bit hesitant. He's a wee bit bomb scare sort of stuff. So no, I'm not sure about him at all. I just have to say today is my mum's 50th birthday. So if she's watching, which I doubt she is, because she'll be running about mad getting the party arranged. Happy birthday, mum. If I hadn't said that, happy birthday. I she would have went mental. Ross, what are you looking so confused about? I, I thought you were about 45. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do maths. <laughs> I'm 31. That's what it tells folk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the beer confuse you. I'm only 31. Uh, so happy birthday, mum. Um, Ross, second half, as good as we were in the first half, kind of, you know, creating chances, slip play, the second half just felt as if it petered out for the for the 45th minute. Yeah, again, you're playing Barker in the middle of the park and stuff as well. So you're playing boys out of position in order to get them 45 minutes in their legs, do you know what I mean? And hoping that, hoping that they put in a, a performance. I thought, Ke- obviously, Kent's only just came back. I thought he was a bright spark again. Regardless of the fact he's only been back training, I think maybe two sessions or something. Um, aye, Peter do a wee bit, definitely. But um, again, it's another 45 minutes in the legs. For some of the boys in the second half, it was their first 45 minutes in the legs. Um, Robert yeah. Herring's put, look, for fuck's sake, guys, for fuck's sake, sales guys, is a friendly. I don't know. <laughs> I think it means, maybe it means something else here. And look, Scott, it is a friendly, but. We're talking about certain players, your Jones, your Barkers, who haven't impressed in the past. So it's nothing new that we're seeing, as you can see my daughter in the background there. But it's nothing new that we're seeing for these guys. I don't want to be too harsh on Jones uh, and Barker. Like I say, it's a pre-season. But if they really want anything to do with this Rangers team, they really need to show in pre-season, do they not? They do. And the players, like you said, Jones, Barker, they've... They've been at a club a while, and there's games you can pack out and say Jordan Jones was superb that day. When he came, he'd done a couple of decent games. I wait him while he's done well. Barker's done well, especially in the Open League games. Sometimes he's a lot of running, a lot of defensive work. But there are games you could probably pick in your one hand, whereas there's other players who are just consistently perform 7 or 8 out of 10 every week. So unless we can get up to that standard, I'm never going to be at Rangers that long. And that's the reason you can play well one week, one game out of four. But if that's your case, you're not going to be at the club at Rangers. You have to go down a bit and you have to just limit your ability. You have to get on to the ball that way. So that's how you're better at maybe sit more than D, something like that. Because you're, you look a good player there, but when you come to Rangers, if you only do it once every month, but you don't look a good player because the fans are on your back very quickly. The manager realises you're more consistent or you're more for the first team. So you're just going to hang about for a while, take a wage and then eventually leave. I know, and look, it's, there's a few people saying look, it's a pre-season friendly, but I don't think we've kind of overreacted in any way, shape or form, Brian, but just look at Gerard on the side of the pitch. Gerard did not look happy with what he seen today. No, he was, there was a couple of times he looked over and the camera went over and he was he was clearly fuming. So, but as I say, I'm not too bothered at this stage because we're only game two into the pre-season. If this was game five, last game of the pre-season, you would be starting to worry because the the qualifiers in the league six season will be starting soon, but it's only game two. I don't think there's anything to really stress about just now. No, and D Mac puts the only guy who took his chance today was Bassi. Now, I get what he means, but I slightly disagree with that. And D Mac, I'm sorry if you haven't included Stephen Kelly in that, but Ross, from the first game and now this game, um, Stephen Kelly is a must to be in this Rangers team this season, is he not? Aye, they would be good uh, about the squad. Definitely, he's a useful squad player. I don't think he's a starter. No, 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 no. But he's a definitely. You think again, going back to last year when you're playing, um, Ryan Jack pulls up with an injury, and you're then forced to start playing a rebo in the midfield three, where you've not got that enforcer. So uh, Kelly's definitely, he's he's went out on loan. He's done his he's done his time away. Last year, especially against talking about taking your chances, the games when he was on Terry against Celtic, uh, cup games, league games, performing well and getting and battling. And so, for me, he's somebody who last year on loan took his chance and he's came back into pre season and looks if he's really got the bit between his teeth. Looks if he's kept himself in good condition throughout the summer as well. It doesn't look as if uh, he's kind of struggling to get up to speed of that. So, 
he's a very he's a very good young player. I, I don't know about the boy. I, I was quite looking forward to seeing the boy we've signed for Bournemouth. I'm not even going to attempt to butcher his name, but uh, I was looking forward Off to seeing ball. him. But he doesn't seem to be back yet for whatever mm. reason. I don't know if he's injured or but I it looks as if they've recognised that that midfield enforcer role that Jack does, we need somebody else to come in there and, and I don't see why Stephen Kelly couldn't do it. He's proved it in the in the league already last season that he can do that for a, a mediocre team, never mind just recycling the ball over to better players. He'll look like a better player. He's, oh, it, oh, sorry, on you go, Brian. It's, a, it's almost like the, the, the perfect loan, Stephen Kelly. He goes away, he does the graft, he plays for a team, gets gets his plaudits and then comes back and doesn't doesn't look out of sorts when he plays in the Rangers team, you know. And yourself, Scott Stephen Kelly, because when I said that, I don't know if I seen you shaking your head or not. Yeah, it's my head. Not very often that somebody disagrees <laughs> with me, you know. <laughs> I, I would not comment. I'm not comment on that. But no, the, the thing I like about Stephen Kelly is he just looks very comfortable in that mm-hmm. position. He doesn't like yeah. overall. He's on. He's looking for the ball. He like what says he recycles it well, but he goes looking for it after the attack and like, went up. Plus a time, you see him taking a step back just to cover in case we get we get broke on stuff like that. So very very good player, very technically gifted player. He's very good on the ball. You can see he can use both feet to pass the control, but he needs a game really well. And he's for a for a wee guy, he's solid. Yeah, he can put attack on as well, which mm-hmm. I like. But no, he's just very comfortable, Matt. And I agree with you. I think he should be in the first team squad. Maybe come on the sub some games, playing maybe the League Cup game stuff like that, but I think he should be in Cody somewhere. I don't think he should be going back out because I think he's past that having the two ones previous. So I think we should start to include him in the first team squad. I would have no problems with him playing against Dundee, Hamilton, Aberdeen. So just just finally, um Lundstrom, Ross, new signing, started the game. Really hard to judge, obviously, on 45 minutes of football. But what did you make of his kind of first half performance? Just to look at him, the build him, the way he plays, the tackles he goes in for, what did you make of yeah? it? Uh, it was even harder to judge him on 28 minutes because I missed it. True. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, in all seriousness, I thought uh, he looks like a, he's a lot bigger than I thought. He looks like mm-hmm. a big, physically imposing player. There was one, he, he broke free up on the right and the boy kind of gave him a shoulder yeah. mud off the ball, which I was a bit surprised. I thought that he looked as if he was going to win the, the tussle. But again, he's another guy who's obviously only joined us last week. So how much fitness work has he done? Do you know what I mean? See the, the likes of that 40-yard burst that probably done him in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, but I, I, again, a player who's got Premier League experience, Coming up here, um, he's obviously got a calibre. Do you know what I mean? It would just be a case of whether whether he can he can do it on a wet Monday, Wednesday night at Livingston on the Astro. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the only Astro left, I should say. Uh, CGM says, "Well, he looks strong and powerful." Scott, again, it's the last question, so I'll just take the same question to you and Brian. Scott, you come in first. Uh, your first impressions of Livingston? I think you looked okay. It's hard to jump. I was trying like 45 minutes, but he looked good. He's making forward runs. He was coming back defending. Like what I said, when he gets shoulder bars off the ball, I thought he might have stood his ground a bit better. But it's his first game we've watched him, so I'm not going to get a size and flat. But he looks a lot bigger. You know, I watched him in a few times. I never looked as big. Maybe it's just the Rangers that makes him look bigger. I don't know. But I think he'll be improving to the squad, and I think he'll do well, especially when I'm a few three. Brian? Yeah, as I say, I didn't realise how big he was either. He's, he's a strapping lad. Um, but yeah, his, his energy was all evident the day he was bursting forward, trying, even that, that nudge that Ross was speaking about there, he was moaning at the referee because he didn't get a foul. So, you know, he's he's he looks as though he'll, he'll be a good player. I don't think there'll be any question about that. No, absolutely. Ross, just very, very quickly, did Ryan Kent look bigger to you? Did he? Yeah. Yep, did he look as a I believe, I, be, I believe that when Gerard first came, if you remember, he wanted to have his fitness people and his nutritionists. His he, he demanded his own backroom full team, and and it's paying dividend. He's obviously watched Scottish football and seen what a player in Scotland's got to look like, 
Yeah, I mean, you look at the difference today with, with Ryan Kent compared to the Ryan Kent we had two seasons ago. It's like a different boy, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 you look at Scott Wright, you look at Aribo, you look at even Calvin Bassey. He looks mm-hmm. like the rock. He's came back looking like Pete Dorpa. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think everybody, the, the only downside for me and the look of players coming back the day was Brandon Barker's haircut. That's a shocker. <laughs> that could be a podcast on its own. And then I thought to myself, Brandon Barker's got the best hair I've ever seen. Then Robbie McRory came on and said, Here, hold my beer. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let's get on. Uh, Don, that note. <laughs> I think um, I think Hadji, Hadji looks as though he could do with bulking up a wee bit, no? I think Hadji looks as if he has as well. Looks as if, he's been, looks if he's been on the performance in Hanson Coffees, aye? Oh, well. <laughs> and on that note, we shall finish up. Um, we are on, obviously, we're only on YouTube for match reactions now. The last I checked, we were right away for 2K, so please, if you're watching, do subscribe. Um, we will be back on Thursday with our post-season. I suppose, is it still technically post-season, even though we're in pre-season? No, it's pre-season. Is it, it's pre-season. pre-season. With a pre-season podcast, and the podcast will stay on a week until the season starts. So I don't know how, guys, we managed to get 32 minutes out of that. That's phenomenal. Great work, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> longer longer yeah. Ranger TV, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll speak to you all very, very soon.